Hi everyone, it's Katrina. From incredible discoveries of new species to a mythical place now believed to be real, here are eight surprising things found in caves. Number 8. The Poisonous Cave The Movil Cave is located on a barren, desolate plain in southeast Romania's Constanta County, near the Bulgarian border and the Black Sea. It was discovered in 1986 by workers who were testing the ground to see if it was a suitable place for a power plant. The first descent into Movil Cave was made by Romanian scientist Cristin Lascu. Until then, it had remained isolated from the rest of the planet for five and a half million years. The Romanian authorities kept the cave sealed, and less than 100 people have ever been allowed inside. This is partially due to the dangerous journey down a long, dark shaft that is required to reach it. You have to know what you're doing, and climbers must also make their way through narrow limestone tunnels in uncomfortably hot and humid temperatures of 77 degrees Fahrenheit before finally reaching an underground lake within a central cavern. Microbiologist Rich Bowden made the descent in 2010. He described the stench of the odorous underground lake, stating, The pool of warm, sulfitic water stinks of rotten eggs or burnt rubber when you disturb it as hydrogen sulfide is given off. The cave's air is not only smelly, but hazardous, containing just 10% oxygen as opposed to the 20% humans are used to. Because of this lack of oxygen, as well as the presence of gases, including carbon dioxide levels that are 100 times higher than normal, you can immediately develop a headache upon entering, and can only spend between 5 and 6 hours in the cave maximum without the assistance of a breathing apparatus before incurring severe kidney damage. This place is no joke. The most dangerous part of exploring the cave involves swimming through the underwater maze of tunnels in complete darkness in search of air spaces. Much to the surprise of scientists, Movil Cave is teeming with unique lifeforms never before seen by humans, including species of spiders, snails, shrimps, centipedes, scorpions, and wood lice. Over 48 species have been identified so far, 33 of which are found nowhere else on the planet. They feed on bacteria known as autotrophs that thrive in a strange layer of frothy foam at the top of the lake. Exactly how the creatures survive in the absence of light is unknown. Number 7. Giant Lemurs in early 2015, divers and paleontologists discovered a graveyard full of extinct giant lemur remains in a water-filled cave in Madagascar. The bones were found in Simanamsotsa National Park at the bottom of Avon Cave. I'm not sure if I said that right. Along with the remains of several other species, including turtles, rodents, crocodiles, and an extinct flightless bird similar to an ostrich known as the elephant bird. However, the giant lemur remains were the most abundant. Scientists uncovered different species of giant lemurs, which they called sloth lemurs, koala lemurs, and monkey lemurs in reference to the modern-day animals that they most closely resemble and to distinguish between their different lifestyles. The biggest lemurs were the size of gorillas, and all the species went extinct sometime between 500 and 2,000 years ago. Researchers have yet to determine exactly how the bones ended up in the cave, but the prevailing theory is that the remains washed up there, both before and after the arrival of humans. The well-preserved remains, which include complete skeletons, offer an unprecedented look at the animals' lives as well as their extinction process. Number 6. Glow Worms on New Zealand's North Island, there's a cave that's known for its population of Arachnocampa luminosa, a glowworm species found exclusively within the country. It's part of the Waitomo Cave system and is a tourist attraction offering boat rides underneath the glimmering worms. The indigenous Maori people had known about the 30-million-year-old limestone cave for over a century when they first led English surveyors to its entrance in 1884. Surveyor Fred Mace and a local Maori man named Tain Tinorao explored the cave extensively. They were fascinated by both its limestone formations and the ceiling that was covered with twinkling glowworms. In 1889, the cave was officially open to the public for tours, charging a small fee. An adult glowworm is about the size of an average mosquito, and there are thousands of them in the cave at any given time. They are overseen by a scientific advisory group tasked with monitoring their living conditions, including humidity, rock and air temperature, and air quality, especially carbon dioxide levels. This information determines how the cave should be managed to protect the glowworms, right down to how many visitors to allow each day. In addition to the glowworms, the cave is home to several unique insect species, including giant crickets and albino cave ants. There are also several underground lakes within the cave, containing New Zealand longfin eels. 
And now for number 5. But first, let me know any requests you have for future videos with hashtag Origins Explained and I'll be sure to give you a shout out. And if you're new here, welcome and be sure to subscribe! Number 5. World's Earliest Winery have you ever wondered about the oldest shoe in the world? For those of you that have, the oldest known leather shoe, a 5,500-year-old perfectly preserved moccasin, was discovered in an Armenian cave near the village of Areni. Archaeologists returned to the site in 2007 for further exploration and found an ancient large-scale alcohol production facility, including vats used for trampling grapes by foot, dried vines, fermentation containers, and sampling cups. The setup is estimated to be over 6,000 years old. This evidence suggests that the grape was domesticated earlier than previously thought, which makes sense since DNA analysis has traced the earliest days of winemaking to Armenia and surrounding countries. Archaeologist Gregory Areshian of the University of California, Los Angeles confirmed that it was the most reliable and earliest evidence of wine production. In his words, for the first time we have a complete archaeological picture of wine production dating back 6,100 years. A nearby cemetery which contains drinking vessels suggests a strange correlation between drinking and death for the prehistoric people who created wine at the site. However, nobody knows who these people were. Number 4. The Lupercal in 2007, an Italian team of archaeologists discovered a cave that until then only existed in Roman mythology. The 26-foot-high cave, believed to be the Lupercal, was found 52 feet underneath Palatine Hill, near the ruins of Emperor Augustus's palace. In fact, the archaeologists who found the Lupercal were doing restoration work on the decaying house of Augustus. The newly uncovered cave contained shells, mosaics, and marble. The Lupercal holds an important place in Roman mythology. According to legend, the twins Romulus and Remus were abandoned on the banks of the Tiber River. They were later nursed by a female wolf at Palatine Hill, the site of the Lupercal, where they founded the city of Rome in 753 BC. Following the discovery, Italian culture minister Francesco Rutelli confirmed that experts believed it was likely the legendary Lupercal. Fears that the cave might collapse hampered its further exploration until a camera probe was sent in, revealing even more of the cave's fascinating architecture and artwork, including a large white eagle depicted in the center of the ceiling. Archaeologists are still reportedly searching for the entrance to the cave, and it hasn't officially been confirmed as the Lupercal despite all signs pointing towards such. If it is, in fact, the Lupercal, it is arguably the most sacred ancient Roman site to exist. Number 3. Murals of the Life of Buddha In 2007, a villager in a remote region of Nepal led an international team of archaeologists to a cave containing 55 previously unknown paintings depicting the life of Buddha. The team was already in the region restoring paintings in a 15th century monastery and asked the local if he knew of any other ancient artwork. He remembered seeing the cave paintings as a child and took them there. The collection of 12th to 14th century artwork was located in a partially collapsed cave high in the Himalayas, about 155 miles north of Kathmandu in the Kingdom of Mustang, which has long been forbidden to outsiders. For centuries before being taken over by Nepal, the region was part of Greater Tibet. The team, which consisted of American, Nepalese, and Italian conservators, used ice picks to access the 11,155-foot-high cave. They then began carefully restoring the paintings within it. Luigi Fieni, a member of the team, explained the significance of the paintings in an interview with The Guardian in 2007, stating the Mustang cave paintings do not reveal a Tibetan but a strong Indian influence, including the animals that they depict – leopard, tiger, monkey, and deer. The discovery of ancient manuscripts nearby, coupled with the painting, suggests that the site was once a Buddhist teaching retreat. To avoid vandalism and theft, the location is kept a secret. Number 2. Snotite Also known as cave slime or snoticles, snotite is an abundance of bacterial growth resulting in a slime that drips from the walls and ceilings of some caves. As you can probably guess, it was named after its mucus-like consistency and texture. In 2003, microbiologist Diana Northrup explained in an interview with NASA that the slime is essentially a biofilm created by cave bacteria in which they exist in. The slimy film is a microenvironment within which bacteria protect themselves in caves rife with sulfuric acid and bacterial waste. Northrup and her colleague, microbiologist Penny Boston, first brought widespread attention to snotite while studying it in Cueva de Villaluz, a toxic sulfur cave in Tabasco, Mexico. 
The term snotite was coined in 1986 by a man named Jim Pisarowicz, who was the first to explore and document the same cave. Most acid-producing bacteria have the effect of chipping away at cave walls, creating soft stone known as punk rock. On the other hand, some bacteria create more rocks in the form of crystals, known as snotites. They look similar to stalactites, but carry a bacterial signature in their crystal formation. The slime often occurs in caves with virtually no outward sign of life, such as Lechuguilla in New Mexico. However, the snotite itself is a sign of life, given the population of microbes contained within it. Several new species of bacteria have been discovered through the DNA analysis of cave boogers, I mean, snotite. To learn more about them, researchers will likely have to attempt growing them in labs. Number 1. Ulm Salamander In the caves of Slovenia and Croatia dwells a pale pinkish salamander that is almost entirely blind. The Ulm Salamander adapted to life in dark caves by developing various super senses, including the ability to sense electricity and possibly magnetic fields. It retains its larval form, consisting of red feathery gills, its entire life, including past the age of sexual maturity, around 16 years old. As it grows up, the Ulm salamander's eyes stop developing and are covered by layers of skin, since it doesn't use them. Despite being mostly blind, it can detect light using its hidden eyes and parts of its skin. To make up for its practically non-existent eyesight, in addition to its super senses, the Ulm salamander has heightened hearing and smell. This fully aquatic creature can live to be over 100 years old and feeds mostly on insects, snails, and crabs. For over 20 million years, the caves have provided the Ulm salamander with an undisturbed environment. However, this is quickly changing due to both pollution and the rise in black market collectors of the species. To combat these threats, scientists are actively setting up shop in caves and further studying the Ulm salamander. Thanks for watching! Which discovery was your favorite? Let me know in the comments below! Remember to subscribe and click that notification bell! See you next time! Bye!